Apple's Mail app is one of the most simple and powerful apps in the stock app lineup. It's great for sending quick emails when you're on the go, but it also has more advanced capabilities if you're a more seasoned user and looking to use the app to add your different mail accounts, schedule replies to emails, and generally organize your work. It's really functional when trying to stay organized, and it's an app that many users use every single day. So let's get straight into it. What's up guys, this is Shiv, and welcome back to another video. The main screen of mail is the inbox, where you'll see all your emails listed out chronologically. Here, you'll see the sender, subject, and email preview, along with icons that mean different things. A blue dot next to an email means that an email is unread, and a gray arrow means that there are replies in that email chain. And quite helpfully, you can see an overview of the email chain by pressing the blue arrow towards the right. The paperclip icon indicates that there are attachments in the email, and a clock means that you'll be reminded later about that email. If you swipe right on an email, you have the option to mark the email as read or unread, and can also be reminded of the email later. If I click into Remind Me, it takes me to a page where I can choose the date and time I'd like to be reminded, or remove a reminder if one is already set. If you swipe left on an email, you can flag it, move it to archive, or select more options. If I click into more, I get a full page of more options. Along the top, I can reply, reply all, forward, or archive the email. Then moving down, there's the option to remind me, flag, mark as unread, move to different inboxes, delete, move to junk, mute notifications from that chain, notify me when new emails on this chain come in, and block the sender. Also, if you swipe right all the way, this will read or unread your email instantly, and swiping left all the way will archive your email. There's also a search bar that lets you easily search for emails using keywords. Then looking at the buttons on the inbox page, starting off with edit in the top right. Pressing this will let you select multiple emails at once and mark them so you can move them to junk, mark as read or flag, move them to another folder and archive them. The bottom right icon lets you compose a new email. The bottom left icon lets you filter your inbox. So you can see by default, it filters by unread emails. You can change this by selecting unread at the bottom and a new page comes up with more filter options. At the bottom, you've got accounts of your unread emails and by dragging the inbox down, you can refresh your inbox for new messages. The top left mailboxes option takes you back to a screen where you can see the different folders across all your various inboxes and email addresses. And you can choose to access each email address's respective inbox or all of them at once. There's also a VIP inbox, which lets you quickly access mail from your most important contacts. You can add VIP contacts through here. We're halfway through the video, so I wanted to give a quick shout out to channel sponsor SeatGeek and let you know you can get $20 off your first ticket purchase with my code SHIVSTUDIO at checkout. SeatGeek is a ticket website and app that takes the confusion out of buying tickets. They score each ticket from zero to 10 and color code them green or red so you know if you're getting a good or bad deal. I used them in New York and picked up some basketball tickets that were rated a 9.4 dark green, so I ended up paying about half a retail price for these awesome tickets. You can check them out using the link in the description below and remember to use code SHIVSTUDIO to get $20 off your first purchase. Now moving on to composing new emails. You can actually hold this icon to see any draft messages you've created. If you press this icon, you're taken to the Compose New Message page, where you can add your email recipients, CC and BCC contacts, choose from which email account the email is to be sent, add your subject, and compose your email. As you can see, Sent from my iPhone is the default signature, and I'll come on to how to change this in a minute. If I click into the body of the email, you'll see an arrow appear above your keyboard, and pressing this gives you a lot more options and functionality when composing your message. Pressing the AA icon lets you format your text, so you can pick from bold, italics, underline, strike through, different fonts, sizes, colors, bullets, and various spacing options. Then if I press X and the arrow again, the next option is to add an image from your photos to your message. Take a picture using your camera and add that to the message, scan a document, copy and insert text using the iPhone's live text feature, attach a file, 
and insert a drawing. Sometimes when composing a new email, you need to refer to another email in your inbox to copy some text or retrieve an attachment. The Mail app makes this really easy. You can simply swipe down your current email, which gets stored at the bottom of your screen, allowing you to browse the rest of your inbox. You can then open another email, copy text or hold and drag an image. Click on your new email at the bottom of your screen and paste the text or image wherever you need. And finally, once you're ready to send your email, you can either send it instantly by pressing the blue arrow in the top right or schedule your email by holding on the blue arrow and choosing when your email should be sent. You can see that under iOS 18, there are so many ways to customize and personalize your emails to make sure you get your message across clearly. Now moving on to mail settings. To access this, go to settings and then mail. From here, you can choose the default mail app and add or remove the accounts you want to see in the mail app. To add a new account, click on accounts and then add account. Mail is great because you can add email addresses from iCloud, Microsoft, Google, Yahoo, AOL, Outlook, and others. Just click into any of these options and follow the on-screen instructions. Then going back to the settings, preview lets you select how many lines are shown under your emails. This is set at two by default, but you can choose to display up to five lines. Then you can choose to show or hide the two and CC labels and also customize your swipe options. Then you've got a few messages and threading options such as collapsing red messages. And finally, composing settings. In these settings, you have the option to adjust how attachments are treated in replies. And most importantly, the option to change your signature. If you click into this, you'll see you have the option to change your signature for all accounts together or per account. Finally, you can choose your default email account. And a really helpful feature of mail is the send delay which means mail will wait a set amount of time before sending your email, which lets you edit or cancel sending your email if you press send too early. This is set to 10 seconds by default, but can be adjusted to up to 30 seconds if needed. That wraps up my in-depth look at the Apple Mail app and how to maximize its features for a seamless mail experience. I hope you found this guide helpful and informative, and if you did, make sure you hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to stay updated on all things tech and productivity. Let me know in the comments below if you have any thoughts on the Mail app or some tips of your own, and I'll catch you in the next video.